If you love art supplies, trying new things, want to see how different supplies and gadgets work, I think that we're soulmates and I think this might just be the perfect broadcast for you. Today we're going to go over art toolkit. My art friends and I are always looking for the best hacks as far as lighter weight items to take out painting because we do plain air paint. We really try to make sure that things are easy to open, easy to handle, easy to manage. We have a big trip set up for this summer and thought let's see if we can get our gouache and watercolor palettes smaller and more compact so that when we fly we don't have as much stuff. So I had seen art toolkit on social medias where I saw it and other people using it and then I saw a youtuber who I follow that I love she had an art toolkit and I just thought I think this would really help us with weight. So let's talk about art toolkit and I'll turn this over so that you can see art toolkit right there. It comes, it's very small. So if I look at it sideways on camera, you can see kind of how tiny it is. It's almost like a little makeup case and you pop it open and you'll see I've used this one. It's configurable and it's very messy. The pans have two kinds of pans that come with it. There's a magnet base in here and then you've got color mixing pans and they have a white film on the bottom of the little pans and you can configure these however you want. Now the one that I got had a variety of sizes and I really loved the bigger pans. The ones I filled, they came like this, empty, and you'll see it's a piece, little piece of metal and I honestly when I looked at it I thought that's not going to fill that much paint up. I was really surprised at how much paint filled in here and how long I am able to keep using the same paint from this pan. But they come in all different sizes. Here's little tiny ones so that you can get lots of colors. And here it is compared to my finger. You'll see they're very tiny, about the size of my index pointer finger thumbnail. It gives you an idea of what the size is. Here is a little square one. And then I'm gonna show you some long ones. So you need to decide what size of pans that you want. You can get them pre-filled, or empty and you can completely customize it if you want. So I got this one in, I tried it out, I set it up with gouache. Right away I noticed, and you'll see right here, if you do not fill the gouache enough, and I don't know if you can tell right here, or if you use a gouache that dries out a lot, it will crumble and then you have a mess on your hands. So I am on the search for the most sticky gouaches that I can find. I know that it's going to be the same with watercolor paint. There are some brands that are a lot harder in pan form, and there are some made with honey that are a lot looser, and they remain a little bit sticky. So something to think about when you're filling these pans up. I love this. I fell in love with it. I thought it was great. I've been using it a lot. I have had to refill the white and the black, which I did not fill enough, and now I've got a mess that I'm gonna have to water down and try to mush into a solid and add more paint to. I My original Illusion Crimson dried out, so I changed brands and picked a Quinacridone Magenta instead after the Illusion Crimson crumbled and made a big mess, because I don't wanna open it up in the field and have all the paint fall out. That defeats the whole purpose. So this is the exciting part. Got this in, and I said, I love it. So I'm gonna order the other two sizes and see if I like them and build some watercolor palettes. We're gonna do that today together. So it came like this. I There are actually three sizes within this box. I'm not very big, here's the size of my hand. I'm going to open this. I have not opened this which has just about hurt my heart. I have had this box for two weeks. Okay, so little piece of paper. I'm gonna open this up. And they do this, such a cute little job of wrapping. So I get in here and there's a little packet, look. And look at this, okay. This is gonna give you an idea of what I ordered. First thing we got is the Demi palette, which is their smallest palette. Then 
the pocket palette. So there's the sizes. And I'll lay these out here in a second. Those two sizes I did not have. I wanted two demis because I want to have one for gouache and one for watercolor. And then I'll see what I travel with. I also ordered a second of the largest, which is called a folio palette. This is the one I had, but I wanted to have one just for watercolor since I paint with both. And then I ordered some extra pans. So if we're gonna open this up and I'll show you the different sizes. So here we have largest palette, smallest palette, middle palette. Each of them come in a darling little sack. And then when you open them up, I'll show you what they look like. You can slide off this. And then you can take it out of its little pouch. Super cute. I bought silver for watercolor versus here's my black one. So now you can see I will know at a glance that this one is my watercolor and I will know at a glance that this is my gouache. And I'll keep that the same so that if I have both of them, I can grab a palette and I'll quickly know what is in it. Again, looking for speed and how fast I can do things in the field. Let's just open these up and compare them. Here is this one open and there's a little welcome card. And this is how it comes. Now I typically like to paint with bigger brushes. Knowing myself and how I work, I had a feeling that I would want to replace these pans with bigger pans. And so that's what I ordered. I have several different sizes and then I'll show you what a mixing pan looks like empty as well. So I knew that these two mixing pans would be fine. I love them, they're great size. This is a mixing area on top. You'll see I mix over here. So this is all mixing area. These I was gonna keep the same. But a lot of these little guys, I'm going to change out, even for watercolors. I'll decide what colors I think I absolutely have to have in my palette. And this is an extra mixing pan for one of my smaller palettes. The larger ones they come in these great little containers. And these are the larger fill. They will look like this. So again, there's my replacement for those. I did order some mixing palettes in the square size. I did not have one in here, but I wanted these for some of the smaller palettes that I ordered. So I ordered some of those. These little guys are this one. So you put paint in these guys. So I have some extra ones of those. This is gonna be my watercolor palette. I then ordered the smallest one. So if I close this guy up, we're gonna compare now, and I'll show you the different sizes, closed and open. So I knew that this one would be watercolor. That's a big difference, but how cool is that? You could put this in a little, just in your pants pocket and take it anywhere. Long hike, wherever you're going. I left this one empty. I knew I would be filling it with small pans. This is a very tiny little palette. This gives you an idea how you can configure them. If I wanted another mixing palette, I would put that in there. I could also do one giant one for a main color and four little ones. So you can configure these any way that you like, which is really, really fun. Again, to compare sizes, this gives you an idea. Here's our little one. Here is our big one. And inches on these, that's why I have the ruler here. The big one is five inches on the inside, three and a quarter deep. The little one is one and a half by two, about two. Really, really tiny little palette, which is awesome. We have one more size. Little one, medium, and again, I bought this as a gouache palette. She does offer in the holidays different colors of these. She had a green one at Christmas time. Missed out on it, they sell out. So if you're gonna wait till the holidays, make sure that when you see something unique, you grab it because it will be gone. And I am in no way being endorsed or I paid 
myself for all of these materials. No one encouraged me to do this. It's, I just really love the palette. I went through knowing I was getting these and I wanted to test a new watercolor set and fill one of these with the watercolor set. So I'm going to fill my little teeny tiny Demi and I don't know if, if this will work or not, or if it's too many colors, we will find out. I have painted with pretty much every watercolor brand, and I do love the core watercolors. I think they're lovely and just great, great, bright color. They don't have a lot of shift, meaning when they dry, watercolors will not be as vibrant when they dry. There's not as much of a shift with the core watercolors. This was a portrait set. You'll see I tested out the colors and then I used the portrait set with these little tiny different sizes that came in my palette to see if I liked it. These I already pre-filled and I'm going to show you how to fill some in case you are interested in making your own. There were six colors in this palette and I'm hoping and I think I'm right. I am so lucky. This is perfect. My other kit is going to be this one. I am not sure at this point what sizes I will stick with and what I will not. I thought I'd shake things up for myself and curate my own unusual set with these colors. I picked two warms, or a cool and a warm for each of the primary. I went ahead and picked Cami Mielo Medium, which looks very cool. It's not as cool as a lemon, but I typically use a lemon. So I thought, well, let's just mix it up and use a cad yellow medium. And then the second color I have is cad yellow deep. And you'll see the difference. This will be very, very warm. Then I have a warm true red and then almost on a purple, like a violet color, which is a great mixing color. So I have a quinacridone violet. Then I did the same with the blue. So I have a cerulean blue, and then I believe this is an ultramarine blue. So my blues are a little more normal. Then I threw some other colors that I thought might be fun. So we have a violet in here. I can't even read that because the letters are so small and it's a word I've never read. Ivory black. I typically will not use black in watercolor, but I wanted to see how I felt about it as a mixing color. And sometimes you need a really dark color, and I thought this might be fun to put a black in here. So I threw that on there. And then we've got raw sienna and turquoise cobalt, and one more permanent matter deep, which is going to be more of a brown. So you're going to watch me mix these in, bring these over here, and I'm going to fill them with paint. Now, I open my paint up. This will probably get messy. And like I said, I was surprised at how much paint I could get in these, but you don't want to overfill it. Now when it dries, your paint will be lower than it is at first. I stick it in here and then I start to move it around. So I, I kind of make little circles. I try to fill it to the edges. And you'll get an idea once you do this of how much paint to put in here, how much not to put in here. That was a pretty good guess. So I know right now that's going to sit pretty well. And you want to sit it somewhere that it's nice and flat and not at an angle. So as tempted as I am to put it back in the container, I don't want to close the lid until it flattens out a little bit, and I'm just going to set it right there in the corner. You want to use a new toothpick for each one that you use, so get rid of your toothpick as much as you may want to reuse the other end, you will end up with paint all over yourself. And you can see when I put these in the pans, you'll be able to see the difference in my warm and cool colors as well. This is a cad yellow deep, beautiful color. And I don't remember, I'm new to my, my Mary watercolors. I believe that they have honey in them. 
So I am really hoping that since they have honey in them, they will do well in pans. And I'm curious too, I'll be testing out the little corset that I just filled. I am not sure how well they'll do so far. They're great. I poured them last week and they look fantastic. So there is your warm yellow and a cool yellow. And that's going to give me a lot of nice variation when I paint. Again, I'm going to get a clean toothpick. I'm going to move on to my reds. And this one should be fairly warm. Now this one's a little goopier, I can tell. Almost like the binder separated a little bit. I want to make sure I get enough in there, but not too much. Close up my paint tube. I try to keep myself clean, but let me tell you, I am a dirty painter. I always have paint all over me, all over the surface, all over everything. My clothes. I'm curious. I'm just curious. I'm going to make a mess um, to see how this one thins out. Oh, I just wanted to see it. Look at that beautiful red. That is beautiful. Gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous color. And now this purple, magenta. Mix it out. Looks like about enough, maybe too much. I do like the lids on these, these the My Mary lids. They're bigger. Sometimes lids are really, really tiny, so you can see it's a nice size for me to grab. Lots of little divots. And that's quite a bit of paint, folks, so I'll be curious to test this out, see how long it lasts, see how many paintings. I'm guessing that I could probably do three or four large, you know, 12 by 16s maybe, with this amount of color. But I'll have to test that out. That's, that's my guess, which would be great for a trip or a plein air trip. If I have this palette, I want to make sure that I have enough color to get through a, a uh, number of days of painting. And here's this one. Just put this over here. And let's see how this, this color looks. I have as much to work out. Look how beautiful that is. So very purple. It is magenta, but even if I mix with this, look at the variation that I got. Nice, right? So I can vary this red to almost a lizard and crimson with this purple color that I added. It's magenta. Okay. On to blues, and then we'll move on to smaller ones. So it doesn't take that long. You just have to be patient. Spend an evening. I think it takes longer to pick what colors you're going to put in your palette than it does to actually fill your palette. Cerulean blue, classic, beautiful, pretty blue. Great for everything. Great for mixing. Great for skies. Just a great, great color. That one was not hard for me to decide. It is a go-to along with ultramarine. Here's a little sample so you can see it painted out. It's a really, oh, I still have purple in the mix. So you will see a hint of that. There's my cerulean. Better clean that brush a little better. And now ultramarine, tried and true, gotta love it. Now I could go with just those pans. That would be plenty for me. Um, and I encourage everybody to try a limited palette. You will learn so much about color mixing by trying to paint with just a few colors. In fact, you could pick just this one, this one, and this one, or you know, mix it all up 
and do one of each and see what you get with that because you will learn so much. So if you've never tried a limited three or six color palette, I strongly recommend it. I do have on my website a goodies list and I list Sennelier colors and I break it down onto what you can break down for a three, six, or I think 10 color palette. Again, those are just my preferences. You may end up finding you love different colors and you love painting with different colors. I think it's a very personal decision what palette you, you use. I'll add a little more of that ultramarine over here on that spot of ultramarine that I painted. So you can see what it looks like nice and thick and when it dries. And now I'm going to show you how easy it is to fill the smaller ones. So we're going to move on to this size and the ivory black. We'll just go straight to a color that I'm going to make a mess with. And I've got to be careful not to put too much in here because there's not as much mixing area and I have these big old tubes with this big top on it. So I don't want to make too much of a mess. And again, I am getting a toothpick. It's not been used before. Now this is a little trickier. My fingers, I will tell you right now, are getting covered in paint. You will get messy. Definitely you will get messy on this, this little paint filling job for these little pans because wow sir not as easy to fill and here is that black I'll show you here's that ivory again black is a great great color to make yellow or to make greens <laughs> but I just walked through all the guesses on that one let's move on to this fantastic purple, permanent violet blue. Ooh, it just sounds gorgeous, doesn't it? I'm really excited to swatch this and see how it looks. So we're gonna stick some in here. Try not to overdo it. This color looks like one that will get on everything. Sometimes you have colors in your palette that they make a mess all over everything they come in contact with. I have a feeling I'll be ordering more of these palettes as well as refills because you could change out colors or have backups. Like you could have a little set. Instead of taking paints, you could pre-fill your little containers and then take them on a trip with you as your refills or switch colors out to change out your paintings and your palette. I think that would be a lot of fun. So I may try that this summer because it sounds exciting and it sounds really fun. Okay, next one, Permanent Matter Deep. Ooh, now this one popped right out. I haven't opened these tubes, so wowzer, big mess. I made a big mess. Luckily, I caught it. I will pull from the top of this and then in the tube to do a little swatch. Oh, and that is all, I don't know if you can tell that or not, but that was all binder right there in the top. I'm gonna wash that out in my brush bin. And I think there's quite a bit of binder in my little palette. So I'm gonna pull some of that out. And then I'll mix the rest in with a toothpick. And that's going to help keep it soft. So I'm not too upset about having so much binder in here because I think it's going to help keep it really soft versus cracking and crumbling in my palette or when I drop it or at the airport or on the airplane. That's fun. 
And let's see what this color, oh, is that beautiful. Look at that. Looks like, well, it actually looks like blood. Um, I thought it would be browner. That is a gorgeous color, absolutely beautiful red. This is one of my favorites. I have used this extensively and usually a turquoise like this is always found in my palette. More of an opaque color, which you can see. I'm swirling this around not only to mix the binder evenly, but I try to get it in all the corners. So I kind of just make sure that it is even in the pan and it will dry. Like I said, this seems a little over full and I can see it needs a little more mixing. But it always will drop back down when it dries. So it will um, collapse and shrink. And that looks very, very blue as well. Even bluer than the core Alley Cabinet set. You can kind of see the difference right there and brighter between this one and this one. One last one from this set. I don't know, I have not painted with this one. It is raw sienna, as far as from My Mary. I have painted with raw sienna, but not from this brand. So we'll see what this looks like. I think it'll be a beautiful earth color. I typically will mix a lot of my earth colors. This may crack. I can tell just coming out of the two, it was very like formed, the most formed out of anything I've poured. And you'll find that with earth colors. They will be drier, they will crack easier. So I am not sure how well this will do. It seems to be mixing really nice with the binder and smoothing out really nice. That doesn't mean that it's gonna stay as a whole pan, uncracked. And you can probably also see it stand up. It's not, it's not as, uh, you know, like it doesn't just lay down like the other colors did where they flatten out. It didn't do that at all. And that is, it's, it's lovely. Very true, natural, pretty sienna, light sienna color. Great for an earth palette, great for scenes. Um, just a really nice color. So that's it, that's this limited palette. I'm gonna leave these last two. I have, I have two left in these teeny tiny little sections. And I'm gonna leave those and see what I like and don't like from this set. I will test paint with them. And we'll go from there. Thank you all for joining me. And I'll see you next Tuesday.